So today we are doing domains and rain. Um, domains and rain is something about the boundary that involved in the x-axis and y-axis. So let's go ahead and start with the writing domains in an interval notation. Um, I have a little a list for everything for you to remember right now, and I will break it down one by one. So first thing first, we're gonna write the domains and rain in interval notation. An interval notation means we have a starting point and we have a start and end point. So you are always looking for a start point and end point. It's about the boundary. You start from somewhere and you end somewhere. And right here, we were talking about two things that you need to remember, a solid dot and an empty dot. A solid dot means we include the point. So solid is something very strong and solid. So you go into your a parent bracket for this. And then an empty dot that go into be um, a parenthesis. So keep that in mind and how do we're gonna use it. So we're gonna start with domain. When we look at the domain, we're looking at x axis and you go in from the left to the right. That's it, the direction. So if I'm looking from the left on the x axis, right now I'm just focused on the x axis at this moment. So if I go in from the left, the first point do I see on the left that go into B, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that go into B negative 5. That's in my first points on the left, that's my boundary. And then my end points over here. It's going to be at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be 5. So now I'm looking at negative 5 from the left and this 5 from the right. On negative 5, is this a solid dot. Um, so that's going to be a bracket. Oh, my bracket is too big. Let me rewrite it. It's going to be a bracket. And then I'm looking at 5 on the right. It's going to be an empty dot. So that's going to be a parenthesis. So that's it, the answer for my domain. The rain is going to be y-axis. So whenever you think about the rain, you think about bottom to the top. So you go from the bottom to the top. Now we are going to look at the rain. So I only go into focus on the rain this way, on the blue. So if you start from the blue, the lower points is from here. That's going to be zero, my bottom. And I keep going, I keep going, and I stop right there. So from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So zero comma six. If I'm looking at the bottom, the dot right here is solid. So it's telling me that it's going to be a bracket because I'm looking at this dot, you see it's on the zero, it's going to be a bracket. And then I go all the way up and I see it's another empty dot here. So that's telling me on six, I'm going to be a parenthesis. So that is how you do. When you mark the paper, it will be really easier for you to do. Um, so we go into do this question with two end point. I clearly know uh, two, I start from negative five, I end five, I start from zero, I end at six. So what about, I have question like this on number two. Let's give it a try. In this question number two, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I always like to write my chart. If I look at the answer choice, if you're in this notation, that means an interval. So I start with my solid dot, it's gonna be a bracket, empty, it's gonna be a parenthesis. So I'm gonna go right now on my domain. When I'm looking at the domain, I'm looking at X axis and I'm going from the left to the right. Let's start from the left. This right here telling me that it keep going. So I don't really know when it start. When you don't know something that where it start, we call them infinity. It's on the left, I'm gonna put negative infinity. So right here, negative infinity. And then I'm gonna stop. So I'm keep going, I keep going, and I stop here on the x-axis. So right here, oops. On the x-axis, I'm looking at the x-axis. The graph start from negative infinity from here, and it end right here. So that going to be start from negative infinity to zero. That's in my boundary. Always mark the picture so you know. So negative infinity to zero. Negative infinity, we don't know where it is, so we put parenthesis. So on infinity, you also put uh, parenthesis, but we don't know exactly how much the infinity. On zero, if you look, on zero right here, the graph, the, um, we don't see an empty dot. If we don't see an empty dot, that means it's solid. Unless you see an empty dot, otherwise it's solid, so that's gonna be bracket. So we're done with the domain, okay? Now let's do the range. The rain start from this way to see the rain. We are looking at the y-axis. 
So I'm gonna go to the ring and I'm gonna put Y axis. The ring start from the bottom to the top. From the bottom, this is where you first see the graph and that number is going to be zero. And you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. In this case, the graph keep going up. So you keep going like that. So that going to be infinity. So on zero right here, it's going to be a bracket. And then on infinity, because we don't know where, so it's gonna be parentheses, just like that. So that's how I find the domains and rain. And the answer choice, make sure you find them. Sometimes we don't look at the answer choice and we make a mistake. So negative infinity and zero, I'm gonna be D, right? Okay, so that's how you do that. So let's try one more example over here. Um, I'm going to do, we look at the answer choice, you have solid, gonna be a bracket, empty, gonna be a parenthesis. It's all about the boundary, where you start and where you end. So we know if domain going to be X. So I start from the left, I'm going to the right. So every single time I see this, it means it keep going. So I'm gonna have a negative infinity and zero. The line keep going. So from negative infinity all the way to four. So negative infinity to four. On negative infinity, we don't know where it is. It's gonna be a parenthesis. On four, it's an empty. So that's gonna be another parenthesis. Let's try the rain. So the rain is y. And it's go from the bottom to the top. So we are looking at from the bottom. So the lowest number on the bottom, as you can see, this keep going. So we don't even know where. So it's gonna be somewhere down here. So negative infinity. And I keep going and I keep going and I keep going and I stop here. So that going to be negative infinity all the way to um, three. Negative infinity is in, we don't know where it is, it's going to be a parenthesis. And on three is up the top, so that's going to be a bracket. So negative infinity to three. That's how you do it. So what answer choice given you that? That's going to be answer choice A. Okay. So that we just did a domain and reign in interval notation. Now let's try to write the domains and reign in inequality notation. Inequality notation, get it because inequality involving a lot about the left and the right, and sometimes we are crazy. So how I remember inequality is the less than and uh, greater than, I use my left, my hand. So this is gonna be my left hand. When I think about my left hand, that's in less. That's in my left hand. And then when I think about my right hand, oh my God, here we go. That's going to be right. So when it's right, it's more. And this going to be right. So more and less. Okay. So that hopefully will help you to remember if you're on the left, that's the less. And if you're on the right, you are more. So how do inequality notation work? Let's explain about the solids and empty. So right now we're gonna have solid and we're gonna have empty, right? So on solid, let me give you an example. Let's say x greater than and equal to two. The number greater than or equal to two would be two, three, four, and five. We include number two as well. This is solid, we include them. However, when it comes to X greater than two only, then all you can take could be three, four, five, six, and go on. But you will not include number two. So therefore it's going to be an empty dot because you don't include them. So therefore, the note for you to remember is when it's solid, you can have greater than and equal to, less than and equal to. When it's empty, you will have greater than and less than without the equal sign. So that is how you're going to do them, okay? So let's go ahead and try under the example. So right now I'm going to do domain. It's still going to be the same way, thankfully. So domain is X. We're gonna go from the left and we're gonna go from the right. We're still going to look for that boundary. So if I go on from the left on the domain, I'm drawing the domains right here, and I start from the left. The number on the left going to be negative, I mean positive one, and it's gonna end all the way, it's gonna end on nine. So that's gonna be one comma one and nine. 
because we are writing in an inequality notation. So all you're going to do is you put the X in the middle because the X is right in between going from one to nine. X could be anything in between. Now, the alligator gonna open to the bigger number because it's increasing. So you're gonna put the alligator that way so that it's gonna go to nine. Um, now we're gonna look at one right now on one, the number is gonna be an M an empty, so therefore you don't have an equal size underneath. On nine, it is a solid. So therefore you're going to have an equal underneath number nine. So this is the answer for this one. So we already have, oh, thankfully we have everything out of the picture, but still I would like to explain the range. So I'm going to do over here. So I'm going to have the range going to be Y and it's going to be from the bottom to the top. You think about the bottom to the top. Um, the bottom number on the range, so I'm gonna do it this way. Let's go like this on the range, right? The bottom number going to be on this side, so it's going to be zero. And I keep going, I keep going, and I stop at nine. So zero and nine. Again, you go to squeeze the, the letter in between, so that's going to be Y. The alligator always open to the bigger number because it's increasing. And on zero, if you look right now, it's solid. So I have a bracket, I mean, a line underneath. On nine, it's also solid. So I have a line underneath, just like that. So that's telling me what I have, J is exactly correct. Okay. So that is how you do the domains and range with inequality notation with two and point. Now, what happens if we have this one over here that they only have um, one end point? So for example, let's try this one. Um, but thing first, we go going to go with the domain. It's going to be X. The more you write, the more you remember. You start from the left to the right. So this is the domain. I'm going to look. The domain start from the left, all the way from the left, all the way from the right. Do we know exactly where they start if they keep going like that? So in here, we don't know. So I actually from a negative infinity to positive infinity because we don't know where it is. So net left, negative infinity, positive infinity. So whenever it's something that go forever like that, we have a spectral notation for them. We're gonna use this notation X belong to R. It look like a letter E, but it technically mean belong to a special code. So if you like somebody, you can write a letter and you put X belong to, why not X, you belong to somebody. So X belong to R. R is that somebody right here have a name. It's called real number. So this is gonna be real number. Why real number? Because the number is real and you can see it. One, two, three, four, five, negative one, negative five. You can read all that number. So we call them real number. So every single time you see something, like the answer from the domain and brain and go forever like that, we go in to pick the answer D and answer A, right? Because that's the only thing that have that. So we can eliminate this. Now, how about on the range? What is a special number on the range? I just need one number on the range. If you see on the range from the bottom to the top, a special number on the range, if we're gonna go where the picture start, you from one and you go in up right here, right? So on the range, that number is e, one. Well, what is the only answer that have number one? This one, right? So this one obviously is not an answer. So you see, process of elimination already happy. But let me finish and help you understand why it's like that. So don't go, don't move forward yet. Take a look right here. We look at grain in Y, right? And you look the graph. You go in up from number one. You go up, and you at the top. You from one. You go to the top. Whenever you go to the top, that means you are more. So when you more, you're gonna be greater. So this is gonna be more because you're at the top. So more is greater and one is solid, but you don't see any empty. So I have a equal like that. Solid is greater than and equal to, less than and equal to, empty is greater than with no equal to, and less than with no equal to. But in this case, I have Y going to the top. So that going to be more, okay? Hope that makes sense. Now, finally say the best for last, we have number six. Exactly the same thing. We go in to look for the domains and range. Let me write down the table. I know for a fact 
by looking at the uh, answer choice that they want me to do inequality. So I go ahead and put my table like that, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, less than. Now on the domain, I wanna pick a special uh, number. So domain, the x, if I'm looking at x, this point is a special point, right? I can write out the numbers. It's gonna be negative two and zero. So how much is the x value on here? is negative two, how much is the y value? It given me an idea where we start. And this is the range, the range going to be y. So this is x and this is negative two. Now we're gonna ask yourself, look at them, look at x, I'm going this way, right? I'm going to the right of the picture, I mean, of the graph. The graph are going to the right side. So from zero, I'm going to the right. When you go to the right, you're getting bigger. Zero, two, three, four, five. That means you are more. And when you are more, the hand going to be a greater. This going to be an empty, so I just stay with greater. So I will have x greater than two. The only answer choice that have x greater than two. Oh, I am so sorry. It's not two. My bad. It's zero. Oh, I am tripping. I make a mistake here. We um up the point incorrectly. I am so sorry. So let's go ahead and fix this. Um, the x right here, as you can see, the f is zero. My bad. So x is zero. So right here, um, change the number. Let's go into be zero. Okay, I'm testing you. So if you pay attention, you will see it. <laughs> so the x right here is zero. So the only answer that have x equals zero is we cross out b, we cross out c. We only have d two. And we already know that it's an empty. So we also cross out this one as well because it has to be greater than. But let's finish this to understand the range as well. So the range I start from negative two. You know, sometimes you make mistake. We are human. So it's totally fine if you ever make mistake, right? So the range I start from negative two. And if you look at the graph, the graph is going down. So when the graph is going down, it's going to be a less than you go going down, you go to the bottom. When you go to the bottom, the graph going to be less. So y going to be less than, and you put a less than zero. Ah, I'm so tripping today. Suppose to less than negative two. I think I'm nervous for my test tomorrow, that's why. So y going to be less than negative two. OK, so that is how you find them. OK, so here we go. Really hope this makes sense to you. Uh, please watch it more and more. Give me 10,000 likes. And there you go. <laughs> All right, you have a good day. Take care. Bye.